Sure, definitely. And so, and here's what I've got as a welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 6th of June, 2021. And let's look at a proposed agenda for today. So what I had was, and today is a holiday in the US, so we may not have anyone but you and me attending. Um, so I had Jenkins 2.310 changelog preview, and then inclusive naming improvements is probably worth some time, and contributor summit further time, for more time. So um, are there other topics you'd like to discuss, Diraj? Okay, I yes, didn't. That's okay, so that's that's enough. All right. If yes, if there enough. are more, we'll certainly add them. Okay, so so I we learned from our last week's our last review of the automated change log that changes to the PR are discarded until the release is published. So what we need to do is when there's a, a change we need to make, we update the pull request with that correction, and then rely on the tooling to pull in the updated pull request. Okay. If changes are needed after release or, or can't be represented in the pull request, that happens after the re after release and in a separate pull request. Now, I'm not sure how we handle this, but one of my thoughts was, should we, if that's needed, should we create a, should we create a prototype pull request that is awaiting the automated arrival? And I, I, this is just me trying to understand how we, how we, how we do it. And so let's let's try some experiment. So do you have any question there, Diraj? Or maybe we just talk it through and find fine tune it to, to see what, what works for us. Yes. So can you I'm sorry, can you tell me from start like what exactly is the problem and how your solution might solve it? Sure. Yeah. So let's look at, let's go to the change log. Let's just start the review of the change log. So if we go to Jenkins.io and here we look at the pull requests and now we look at the automated change log pull request. So let's speculate that there's something here that needs to be changed that we can't fix. Okay. So this is this is a good reminder to me. I need to use correct formatting. The automation fixed the formatting that I had put in last week. And the fix that it made is correct. It indented underneath the top level thing by two spaces before putting the dash. So mistake on my part. This is another mistake that I made that I fixed a line break and it's determined that it's going to put that line break in. So fixing it was a waste of time. All right, so now here's one we've got, which is bump JNR POSIX. So, okay, so this one has a type to do and it goes through JNR POSIX bump from 317 to 318. We don't want type to do. And so I think we need to go edit this pull request. Now, the problem here is you don't have permission to edit pull request text, if I remember right. Do you? Could you, could you, Diraj, could you open your, this one on your side? And let's see if, because I, I suspect you have to be allowed to merge before you can edit the text of a pull request. Okay. Let me try. 
So I'll paste this URL. Oh, yeah, I'll paste this URL into the chat for our session here. And where is chat? Come on, chat. Okay, so if you'll open that and try to edit the text. When I click it, I've got this edit here. I suspect that's not available to you. So, if I click, okay, I can only see copy link and quote reply. Okay, so so what that says then is the change log automation has a has a problem here for contributors that are not also contributor that are not also granted permission to merge pull requests to to the Jenkins core, and so that's that's a a, a problem we'll need to discuss with Tim. Okay, so uh, permissions issue, Diraj, Meg, and Kristen cannot modify pull request descriptions on Jenkins, Jenkins slash Jenkins repository, right? That's, you're just not allowed. It, must be a, yes. a what a Jenkins core maintainer. So what that's done is, if in this use model the the only people who can fix these, so you could you you could offer a correction here and say, hey, this needs the following fixes, but not you wouldn't be able to give a to fix it right in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and attempt the fix here because now I want, us, I want us to also learn one more item, which is that we've got another problem, which is that uh, Dependabot uh, pull re requests don't follow the standard template. And there's one example so what I think we want to do is we want to get a copy of the standard template and paste it into this thing and then use that to formulate the, the right words in it. So now that means we've got to go full here. So what I need to find is something that uses the standard template here. This is a good choice. And I'm going to go place this standard template inside here. Okay, now we're going to make our best guesses as to which thing should be what. So this one was merged. Now we want to, okay, so. A big long comment. Here we go. Proposed change log entries. All right. So this is that's the proposed oof, that's the proposed change log entry. Okay. Bump JNR POSIX from okay. Okay, and then the proposed upgrade guidelines not applicable. And then the submitter checklist. Okay. All right, now what we don't have here is any link yet to the to the change log for the merged pull request, right? So this was JNR POSIX and the, they, oh dear. So they don't have, 
Okay, now this would be much better if there were a JNR POSIX change log or release notes. Is there such a thing? Releases? Nope. <laughs> okay. Is so there a... Okay. Sorry, go ahead. So we are searching for uh, JNR POSIX release notes for 3.1.8 version, right? Correct. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Do you know where to find them? So if you click on back on this page. On this page, back? Yes, yes. Six days ago, this one is 3.1.8. Uh huh. So there's the tag for it. Unfortunately, oh. there's no, no, there are no release notes no. To, to tell oh. us about it. So we can compare. Mm -hmm. And, and I guess this gives us, well, maybe this is the best we can offer, is this is the comparison between defensive copy. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, okay. And there, there is the text. So, but I'm, I certainly would not want to put this kind of a link into the user documentation. It's just, um, so, so maybe what the answer here is for defensive copy improvements, for, for um, various, for code improvements. What if we said something like that? And no upgrade guidelines applicable, and we call it done then. And then the rest, we just leave it as is. What do you think would, do you think that would be reasonable as so a previously? proposed change log? Yes. So previously did we, commented all the entries related to JNR posits. Oh, oh, that's a very good question. You have asked an excellent question. Let's go look at that. Yes. Very good. Okay, so let's, so that's content uh, underscore data change logs weekly. Okay, so Here's this one. It was not, it was skipped previously. It was only commented long ago. So maybe this is the most recent updates have all been skip change log. So I think you've got the right idea. Let's mark this one as skip change log. What do you think? Yes. Yes, let's mark it as change log. okay so I'm going to I'm going to put update that comment so that we've got it and then I'm going to label it skip change log all right and I'm going to put here edit Diraj. Agreed that this should be skipped in the change log because the last several patch releases have also been skipped in the change log. Agreeable? So yes. we, we put in our comments and we marked it as skip change log. So the next time that change automated change log is processed, it will be skipped. 
Now you wouldn't be able to do this, but but I could. So we we did it this way for now. Sure. All right. So uh, Mark and Diraj skipped. Mark uh, labeled as skip change log. Requires a maintainer. Maintainer permissions. Okay, good. So we've we've learned something there already. And yes, we put now if I refresh this page, it should show it to me. Yes, there it is. Okay, good. So, so I have one oh, go question. Ahead. So we edited the PR to be to align it with the standard template that we follow. And uh, as you said, dependable does not follow that. So we did that because next time the uh, automated change log is done so it will be able to better you know write the specific entry with the help of our edits so that was the reason right correct at least that was my attempt but i'm not sure that that will even that will fix everything because type is listed as to do here and it's not clear to me that the changes we made will fix this one. Okay. Category developer, that's that's correct. That's okay. Although this is a developer item that's very high in the list and developer items by the rules should be very bottom of the list. So the, the location is wrong. Let's note that as well. Uh, location. of the uh, developer PR is too early in the change log, belongs at the end. Okay, so, so that's a problem that the script would need to fix and, and us fixing it now is a waste of time because the script will undo any change we make to move this later. Okay. okay, so we've fixed this one, the no proposed change log. That part is fixed. I don't know how to fix this one. And I would yep. guess that means, what does that mean? That probably means the script does not have a mapping from the label dependencies to Okay, let me make a note of that. Label dependencies does not have a mapping to a specific type. Should it? Okay, got it. Fair enough so far? Yes. So what is the frequency at which this uh, automated change log does its work? So like I used to write it every uh, Tuesday morning. So what about this cha automated change log? Yeah, so this this will be run. I think if we were to look, we would see that it, it either runs on every merge of a pull request to the Jenkins.io repository or to the, sorry, to the Jenkins core repository or it runs on some frequency and checks for changes. So, oh. so I think I think it would, if we did, so last week when we made our changes, it reverted our changes, threw them away, and, and I had to redo the changes after the release was delivered. Did that, oh, did so that answer your question? Yes, yes. So it's very frequent, right? Like every time a PR gets merged, it's on its work. Yeah, as far as I know. And so I'm expecting mm -hmm. that it will that it will lock us, it will throw away mm -hmm. our changes if we make any changes directly in the PR. Oh, right. So you're suggesting we would need to work on the not on the PR, we would need to work directly on the change log that it generates. Well, so right. we, we would need to work on, 
actually, I think in order for our changes to persist, we have to work on the pull requests until the, the deliver, right. until the release is delivered. And then, yes, then the automation people, stops modifying. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, oh. so what you said, uh, if you work on PR, it throws away the changes that we do? No, if we work on the change log, it throws away the changes. So if oh. we work on this thing, if I, for oh. instance, let's, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Let's do what I think is needed here. Mm -hmm. um, what we're really going to do is we want this to be converted to skip, right? Right. And so let's do that. Uh, it will, but then I think tomorrow it will be thrown away. Skipped in the change in the uh, revision. This update, this change log entry should be skipped because other patch revisions of JNR POSIX were also skipped. So here we are saying, hey, this is our review. We're going to suggest that this should be deleted. But the suggestion for the deletion won't actually be honored here. The only way it will be deleted is if it's processed again and the skip change log is, is honored. Oh, makes sense. Got it. Okay. So, so now let's continue though, because there's more for us to re review. Okay, so this one says, all right, there's a request for enhancement and it's registered dependency class loader in the default plugin strategy as, okay, so here it is. It says Jenkins 27, 23784 load classes from plugins in parallel. Let's look at that one and see if we can, usually we wouldn't start with the bug ID. So let's see if we can find that pull request and understand if it's that, that formatting is something we can fix or not. Okay, here it is. So proposed change log entries includes the, the, jank, the bug ID. And I think we want to edit that and take out the bug ID like that. Load classes from plugins in parallel for faster start. Okay. So that should get rid of this text and there will yes. still be a hyperlink to it for, because of that issue link. Okay. Yes. All right. Now. Okay. This next one. Uh, 50, the 5697 graphs can now scale correctly to retina screens. So retina, I believe, is a is an Apple trademark thing. And I'm not sure I want to just limit it to retina. Retina display. Here we go. Brand name used by Apple for its series of IPS, higher pixel density. Okay. Yes, so is it, it is a trademark. Okay, so I'm not sure we want the word retina there if we can avoid it. I would rather prefer high DPI or um, high dots per inch or high resolution. What do you think? Right. Would that be okay? Yes, I think high DPI or anything other than that would be good. Okay. All right. So, wow, graph in a PR. Yeah, isn't that? And I like that. I love it when people put pictures in because it helps me see things. Oh, now I understand what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's much, much better when that kind of thing is done. Okay. So, but I think what we, 
So graphs now scale correctly to high resolution screens or on Is that okay as just as as phrasing? I think yes. Um, a full stop as well. Oh, oh, full stop. Yes, thank you. Good catch. Absolutely. Okay, so we re phrase that. Now it's an RFE. Okay, and then the next is a bug. And here, all we're missing is the full stop at the end. Anything else you see that we need to fix on that one? No, just a full stop, I think. Okay, so now let's go to that one. Okay, edit. Okay. All right. Okay. Then there's this bug, agent controller security kill switch. And the checkbox labeled enable agent to controller access control in the form would always start out as disabled and support, then cause a configuration change. Oh yes, okay. And I think in the past we've used regression in, yeah, we put the full stop at the end after the regression in, right? Yes, I was going to ask you the same thing. Yeah, so, okay, so now let's, let's go find that one and we'll make that minor change. Okay. All right, so the checkbox labeled enable agent to controller here. We put the full stop there and take it from there. Okay, so the checkbox labeled enable agent to controller access control in the form configure global security would always start out as disabled. Submitting the form without checking it would then cause a configuration change. Okay. Do we have two spaces before submitting? Uh, so we text. might. Yes, yes, that's my, always make that mistake. Yes, thank you, good catch. And I think looks good, yes. Okay, so the checkbox labeled enable agent and submitting the form then Okay, good. So we've fixed, we've modified that. Okay, I think we've touched, and then there are these others that are comments. Add no annotations. Yeah, use try with resources. Fix a typo in a JS file. Okay, that one, that one, I'm a little surprised it didn't get any comment in. Oh, okay. This is just removing dead code. The users wouldn't care. Good. All right. Okay. Is these are library updates? Library. And this one is now I don't know if we need that one to have a comment, but I don't think so. So here this one, this one is we had a regression that was never released that came because 
inadvertently, Jenkins got new, got copies of some jar files inside of it that shouldn't have been there. Okay. All right. So I think, I think we're ready. Um, okay. Oh, let's see. We need to submit this review. So, uh, uh we need to, so, oh, go ahead. Oh, are you able to hear me? I am. Yes. Go ahead. Hello. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, great. So, uh, I, with the help of the Docker, I was able to get the change change log, uh, like the manual way that you used to do before. So in that change log, for this entry, the last one that we just edited, so it uh -huh. says the it's a major bug, and now here it says it's a bug. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, so so in the it's this one, this one right here. No, not this one. The the this uh, the checkbox labeled enable agent yes this one so here the type was major bug in the manual change log but here it's just bug oh oh okay so what's there okay so that that is a mistake then in wonder what the difference is that causes this one to be in to not be correctly flagged as a major bug very good catch Okay, so why? So even here the label is bug, right? So it, it is bug, but I don't remember if there is a label for major bug. I think the reason you're seeing it as major bug is because it's a regression fix. And I believe the tool biases towards if it's a regression fix, it must be a major bug. Let's see, is there a major bug? Oh, there is, and Daniel did not choose it. So, so that that's a difference between the tool that you've the the the, the tool that we usually run and the automation. And I think the automation has the preferred result. But let's let's make a note of that for discussion. Sure. All right. So the um, tool that. run to generate the change log would list this as a major bug. We think that is because it is labeled bug and regression fix. Daniel did not label it major bug. So we assume it is better to list it as a bug. It is more accurate. than as a major bug. no change in the suggestion. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Okay. Anything else we need to note here? No, it, it looks good now. Great. Okay. So I am going to commit this suggestion just to just to remind us that remove skipped change log entry. Hmm. No, should I? No, no, let's not do it because really 
we we want the machinery to do it and so if i do it and it happens to get through that's a bad thing yes so let's let's leave it out all right okay so i think we've got this set that we're ready to with our updates i think we're ready to approve it and i may have already done the approve come on no, it's, yeah, so it's already been approved. Good. Looks good. All right, excellent. Thank you, Diraj. So, so we've got questions to Tim around depend about pull requests and where the developer PR appeared. Yes. And maybe, maybe the answer should be, should dependencies default to skip change log? No, no, because really, then we take it away and we have to have a way to then tag something, including change log. I don't want that. Okay, so. All right. Anything else on our review of the change log? Yes, last question is, so let's say next week before this meeting, uh, half an hour uh, before this meeting starts, I want to work on the PR. I want to work on the change log. So I'll be following the same steps, right? Going through the PRs. That first of all, going through the change log that uh, the bot has generated, and then look at the PRs and if there's any problem in a PR in terms of any grammatical mistake or anything. So I would go to the PR and then add a comment for now, right? And then someone like uh, you or anyone else would update the PR suggested by me before looking at if my suggestion is right or not. And then that will be done for that entry because then uh, the bot will be able to write it, write the change log correctly. Are those the steps? Yes, that would be, that would be a great way to do it. Then in the meeting, we copy those, those comments into the text. And then we may want right. to see if we can negotiate with with um, Tim or someone else to allow mm. comments to be part of the, the automated change log processing. Right. Because if we could do right. that, then your comments could be used to, mm. to fix, fix specific problems in like the ones in this one, right? Right. So I would not comments. need to tag anyone right, while commenting. Right. Yeah, you wouldn't need to tag them. We would just discuss them in the meeting. Sure. Got it. Okay, good. Very good. All right, Diraj, thanks for the thanks for the review process. I think we're ready. Yes, thank you. Okay, so now, oh, oh, actually, I wanted to look at it and see how it looks, just in case there's any surprise. Yes, because sometimes I'm embarrassed to realize, wow, if I just looked at that once, I would have known that there were terrible disastrous things that needed to be needed our attention okay so That was not what I. 
Okay, so let's look at the change log. Two dot, oh, we need 2.310. Hmm. What? Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so 2.310, here's the one that we fixed by skipping the change log. Here's the one that we fixed by modifying the pull request. And here's the one that we changed for, okay, good. So, and this one, I made a change in it. And that arrow renders correctly. I think I, th and we, we don't see the hard stops, the full stops on those lines, but we added those. So Great. the layout, no, no disastrous surprises in this layout, as far as I can tell. Yes. All right. So Diraj, in terms of your idea, how do we get the knowledge? How do we get the information from you into, into the pull request description? I think you've got the right idea. You just add a comment here for now because that you can do. And if that comment, mm -hmm. if that comment, then I can, oh no, not here, sorry. You add a comment into the specific pull request and say, hey, I think the change log should be this, paste that text, and then we can go in and copy that from there and paste it up here as needed during the meeting. Sure, definitely. Excellent. Thanks for being part of this experience in automation. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay, so we've got Java 11 in default Docker images. This continues. Uh, changes are continuing uh, in inbound agents. Uh, SSH agents and what else? Oh, and the Alpine images. So Alpine images, uh, Alpine Java distribution being discussed at Adopt Open JDK. And the likely result will be that we'll use the Alpine, the JDK in Alpine. Uh, see the, there's a pull request pending on it. So that the Alpine operating system is a unique thing and adopt, adopt slash adopt Timurin doesn't actually support it. Is, does not building a muscle-based JDK for Alpine. JDK eight or 11, right, there we go. So we're, we're behind schedule on our changes. We had wanted to get those done by end of August and didn't, didn't make it that far, but we're making progress. Any questions on Jenkins in, in Java 11 and default Docker images? Um, no, nothing as of now. Okay, then the inclusive naming improvements. This one's got some, some new information. Um, test automated test failures in many plugins. 
because they, the tests, often assume master as a, the label on the built-in node. Uh, Basil Crow and Daniel Beck proposing pull requests to fix them. And they've done a really great job. Basil in particular has done an awesome job with this. And in terms of the upgrade guide, that's going to need likely needs careful phrasing and detailed instructions. So you and I will need to work on that. Uh, there's, oh, oh, that's right, that's right. There's also proposed to delay 2.303.2 release another two weeks. Yes, I saw messages on IRC about this. Yes. And I like that because it gets it after DevOps world then. Great. Okay. So then, uh, all you've written down in the um, our Jenkins community, that portal, that uh, the Jenkins, this one, contributor summit would be on October 2, right? And DevOps starts at 20, September 29. So it's like a week long uh, summit. <laughs> Not quite. So let's let's describe that. So DevOps World is September 28th through 30th. Then there will be a quiet period where those of us who are part of DevOps World get some sleep. And then we'll do the Contributor Summit just Saturday, October 2nd. Oh, okay. Makes sense. So this is during... I believe it's US East Coast hours. And what we realized is that after three days of conferences during US East Coast hours to immediately start something during India standard time hours, early morning or midday will just destroy us. We won't be able to stay awake. And so what we've done is given ourselves some time to sleep. Yes, good for you. <laughs> Now makes sense, yes. Yeah, and now still, still we need um, uh, need uh, topic proposals, uh, discussions, etc. And so, don't be shy about offering proposals there in that community.jenkins.io thread. Yeah, this looks good. We're getting good feedback on it. Very good. Anything else we need to discuss today, Diraj? Yes. So maybe in future, sometime we can also, what do you think about working on the automate, this changelog automations uh, script? Sure. Like, so we can improve the ordering of the developer tags and the to-do types, something like that. Oh yeah, I think Tim would love it. Uh, shall we take a look at it now? We've got four minutes left. Let's take a look at it now and see, see if we could do something with it ourselves. Okay, now I have to go find the changelog automation script and I think that will be mentioned in... It's in the automated changelog that you have opened, I think. Oh, is it? It's, yes, third tab. Okay, Heard good. All right. So let's go find that. So here in the description, you can see this created by. Oh, created by. Okay. Got it. Here we go. Yes. All right. These are the two scripts. Okay. So what we have here is some Ruby code. All right. So, oh, this will be such fun. <laughs> I don't do read Ruby very often at all. Great. Okay. So 
So let's make it big enough that my eyes can read it. Okay, so it says for each line, look for the SHA, full message, issue. If, if it's got a pull request. And if the commit string if the curl call is the successful parse the comment string parse the commit string Extract the labels from the pull request JSON. Okay, so we've got an array of labels. We've got yes. the commits as a, uh, extracted as JSON. All right, now. Okay, so it says if by if, if we don't match anything else, we're going to make our entry of type be to do. If the right. labels have, so if we wanted to do, um, if we wanted to do dependencies, we could put an entry here, a line here and say, if entry type is, if labels includes dependencies, then make it an RFE or a bug or whatever. Hmm. Yes. Ah, oh, look, and here's the answer to our earlier question. Specifically, this thing oh. says, if it's a regression fix, we're just going to call it a bug, not always call it mm -hmm. a major bug. And I think if we were to look at the history of this thing, we would mm -hmm. see that it, yes, here we go. Oleg changed it, do not consider regressions as a major bug by default. So, oh. so we see that he intentionally switched it this way. Oh, Got good, it. cool. That's very good. Okay, so we've we've learned something by our review already. Yes. <laughs> now, how so did? If we want it to be a major bug, then uh, the person has to label it as major bug, right? There's no any other way. That is correct. If you want to call it a okay. major bug you must explicitly say it's a major bug. Got it. Now it says fetch the categories by labels. Oh, excuse me. And if we don't have a category, say it's to do. Okay, now what I don't see is, is how, how it does the ordering, but I apologize, we've reached the point where I have to end for today. Right, so, so just so, one question about that. Yes. A very quick question. So uh, I tried to run this script by myself, but I was having problem of uh, GitHub auth authentication something so i'm not sure what was the reason behind that like do i need to know some credentials for specific to get uh, jenkins repository in order to run the script i would i would bet that you do because i suspect some of these some of these queries like this one for instance mm -hmm. would require that you be authenticated or possibly that you be authenticated and be a member of the correct group. Oh. So you may you may have to, in order to successfully use it, you may have to be part of a privileged group. Oh, okay. Because uh, Tim suggested me if I can uh, do some changes and improve the script, I can. So I tried to do it that day, but I was not able to run it due to the mm. same thing. Well, and, and it's worth in that pull request asking, hey, is there is there some permission needed? Because I would assume that there's a thing here. Oh yes, here it is. 
Right, so, yes, exactly. And, and you provided the answer to this, right? You gave it a, so curl, if we look at curl underscore off, I'll bet it's used, yeah. So, so the, the argument to minus U of curl, which I believe is username colon authentic access token. Yes. Right. But, but when you did that, it did not, it still did not give you the answers you were hoping for. Yes, exactly. So it was uh, replacing it with nobody slash something, something. Oh, interesting. Because it's hard coded somewhere there. Nobody something like that. Okay, okay, now wait a sec. Curl underscore off. Okay. GitHub. See, I would have expected if you define GitHub underscore auth to be Diraj Joda colon and then a personal access token generated for this purpose, it should authenticate you correctly as you. Now, I haven't tried it though, but th th I think it's worth trying because I think this must be passed in in the case where it's called from the from the job that's running it okay so what i'll do is suggested by you i'll just put a comment on that specific pr to ask right. if i need any specific tokens right absolutely or if you need specific permissions because it may be that right. the answer is as a as a pull request submitter, you don't have enough, enough permissions, whereas Tim as a core maintainer does. So, so that I think it's a good question to ask. Okay, I'll do that. And if I have any problem, then we can also discuss it in the next meeting. Great topic for next meeting. Thanks, Diraj. Yes, thanks a lot. All right, bye. Bye-bye.